Okay guys, we're just going to do a third and hopefully final follow-up with uh, Roy Spencer's comments and uh, I want to use this one because I want to talk about how reality is a real-time phenomenon. Reality in physics occurs in real-time with real-time inputs. Reality doesn't occur by averages. Reality occurs as it's occurring to real-time stimuli and real-time impulse, right? That's when and how reality is functioning. Reality functions in real time to real time inputs and impulses, not to hypothetical averages. So let's take a look here. I'm just going to have my slide, my last slide from my last video up here in the background so that we can refer to it. Uh, but here's the comment from Roy today on his Facebook page. So um, Roy says, Roy Spencer, PhD in climatology. Listen to what he says, Joe, he's referring to me, between uh, these times in the video. Joe disputes that, on average, the 1,370 watts per meter squared intercepted by the Earth is spread over the entire Earth. How can I dispute that? So he's asking, how can I dispute that the input sunshine is spread over the entire Earth? How can I dispute that? Well, I dispute that because any child can make a science fair you know, a little setup in grade three or four, and you can have a light, and you can have a ball, which represents the planet, and the light only falls on half of the planet at once. That's why I can dispute it. I can dispute that light falls over the entire surface of the area, surface area of the Earth at once, because it's a physical impossibility. So that's why I dispute it. It should be pretty obvious, isn't it? Amazing. So then Roy goes on to say, of course, it's not evenly spread, but on average over a year, the entire surface area of the Earth gets a portion of that value. Um, no, it's not that you can't parcel out the incoming energy over the entire surface area of the Earth. That's the incoming energy. You can't just parcel it out over the entire surface area of the Earth at once. No, what happens over a year or over a day is that you have the full you have the full brunt of the flux coming in and the earth rotates underneath that and portions of the earth experience the full brunt of that flux and the full brunt of that flux is strong enough to create the climate to create towering cumulonimbus clouds to evaporate water and all that sort of good stuff that our climate is okay so you can't just take the incoming energy and parcel it out over the entire surface area of the earth at once because that doesn't physically occur. And when you do that, you make sunshine so cold. When you do that on paper, you make sunshine so cold that it can't create the climate. And then, by consequence, you have to create this fake greenhouse effect where the climate creates itself. Obviously, that whole process was mistaken then, wasn't it? Isn't it obvious? So what actually happens, oh, some sun coming out, what actually happens then is that the Earth rotates underneath the incoming solar constant and locations on the surface experience the full brunt of the flux. And that, is strong, and that flux from the sunlight in real time is strong enough to create the climate. The averaged flux, which is a hypothetical consideration, a mathematical abstraction that you can write down on a piece of paper, sure, that doesn't exist. And that's not a physical existence. That's not what reality is reacting to in real time. The average flux, the supposed average flux over the entire surface area of the Earth is not what is driving the Earth. It's not what is driving the physics. What drives physics and what drives reality is all happening in real time with the instantaneous impulses. And with the instantaneous impulse of the sun's heat, of the solar energy, you can create the climate. Whereas this averaging method, it can't create the climate. This is a binary distinction. It is a binary distinction. And I'm boggled, mind boggled, that Roy doesn't want to understand that or doesn't get it. So, and then he even says here, is that right at right angles to an imaginary disc? So he even says, well, yeah, it's like doing that and it's like having an imaginary disc. How is an imaginary disc related in any way at all to our planet Earth. Here is a PhD in climatology saying, well, we're doing all this and we're creating an imaginary disk facing the Earth with one fourth of the input that it actually occurs in real time. Amazing. 
Yes, we divide by four because that's the ratio. Yes, 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 of course, I know that. I don't dispute that. I don't dispute that that's what the factor of four is. And then that's what the difference in surface area. What I'm disputing is that a flat earth, which you would, what you say, even admit is an imaginary disc. I dispute that you can do that. I dispute that you can take the real time input and average it by dividing it by four over the entire surface area of the earth at once and get anything meaningful. And it's obvious that you don't get anything meaningful from that because if you do that, you get sunlight that's minus 18 degrees Celsius and can't create the climate. And then you create this fake version of the greenhouse effect that doesn't exist in order to create the climate since the sun can't do it. And the difference between doing it that way versus the real time way is that the sun can create the climate and no greenhouse effect is needed. You don't have to invent this greenhouse effect. Well, this greenhouse effect is refuted. It's totally fake. If you do it the real time way, the sun creates the climate and the climate is the transfer of heat through the system, the transfer of solar heat through the system. Amazing. What am I disputing? Yeah, yeah. So it boggles a PhD in climatology's mind that I dispute flat earth physics and that I dispute that you can average something that's real in real time into time and space that doesn't exist. Amazing. Yes, only half the earth is illuminated, but the earth rotates. Yes, exactly. The earth rotates. And as it rotates, portions of the earth, locations on the earth rotate underneath the flux which is the real-time flux from the sun, the real-time energy, and that energy is strong enough to drive and create the climate. That's what actually happens. That's how you apply rotation. You don't apply rotation by taking the instantaneous input for one second and, and spreading it over the entire surface of the area of the earth at once. That is not incorporating rotation. That's creating an abstraction that's physically impossible. Applying rotation properly would be doing it this way, where the earth rotates underneath the full brunt of the flux. And when you do it that way, then the sun has the energy and the heat to create the climate. If you do it your way, the sun does not. This is a binary distinction. <clears throat> if you have an electric heater in your house that is on exactly 50% of the time at a thousand watts and then yeah, okay, so over 24 hours, so it's on for 12 hours, off for 12 hours. It's on at 50%, or it's on at full power for 50% of the time, and it's off. Okay, well, what's the difference? The difference is that in real time, that heater would have been, say, hot, say if it was operating with elements or something, it was a conductive heater make, with, with those glowing elements or something. In real time, while that heater was on, it could have, say, lit a piece of paper on fire. And it could have heated your room to say 35 degrees Celsius or something like that. But let's use the example of a piece of paper. The difference is that in real time, when that heater was on, it could have set a light a piece of paper. Whereas if you on paper, <laughs> that same piece of paper, say average the heater's power over 24 hours, then it wouldn't have been strong enough and hot enough to light that piece of paper on fire. That's a pretty, important difference in physics. Here's the difference. Here, let me so, show some pictures. Here's the difference. So Thanksgiving, say, lasts 12 hours, right? Having people over and everything like that, right? So Thanksgiving lasts for 12 hours, but the stove is on for six hours. The stove is only on for six hours cooking the turkey. But you say, well, you can cook the turkey over 12 hours. You just take the take the, so, the, the uh, power that was used by the oven and spread it over 12 hours instead of six hours. So instead of cooking a turkey at say 325 Fahrenheit, you're now cooking it at say 150 Fahrenheit or 175 Fahrenheit. Do you get the same reaction? Can you cook a turkey at half power, but twice as long and get the same result as a cookie, as a turkey cooked at the appropriate temperature for the appropriate time? That doesn't work, does it? You can't take what actually happened in real time to cook this turkey and say that the same thing happens when you half the power but apply it for twice as long. Why not divide the power by four and go four times as long? You would just end up still with a turkey that looked just like this, a cold raw turkey. 
because physics doesn't work that way. Physics is occurring in real time, and the response of material and matter is nonlinear, or it's proportional actually to the input. So in real time, the sun has the power to create the climate. The average sun does not have the power to create the climate. Just like in real time, the oven could cook the turkey. But if you were to average the oven's power over the whole day, instead of just the time that the turkey was actually being cooked, then the oven wouldn't have actually had the temperature and power to cook the turkey. Okay, so a big difference. Also another difference here. Maybe this one will work better. What about a rocket and its flux, or in its, uh, in its thrust? What if you averaged the rocket's thrust over the entire rocket's lifetime in its trip, say, to the moon? So the rocket actually experiences thrust for about two minutes while it takes off. So for two minutes, the rocket experiences a tremendous thrust in real time, which propels it into orbit. Well, why not just take that thrust and divide its power by the entire rocket's lifetime in its trip to the moon? And then say, well, that's the same thing. That's the same thing and it's the same physics. Well, what would happen is you would get a thrust value that was so low that it couldn't have, could have never have lifted that rocket off of the pad, right? How are these not obvious things to think about, obvious distinctions? So this is almost, this is about as basic, oh, okay, no, wait first. It's the same as if we we're talking about the daily average rate of solar illumination. Yeah, it's the same error, it's the same error you're making. Yeah, totally, I get that. So this is about as basic as it gets. Basically wrong, basically wrong physics, base, a basic example of pseudoscience, is that what you mean? Because that would make sense. It's the, okay, so look at this, guys. It's the starting point for all climate science. So he just says here, here he is, a PhD in climatology. So you're not getting it from me, you're getting it from an actual climatologist an actual representative of the academic establishment. It is the starting point for all climate science. So the starting point for all climate science is the belief that the sun does not have the power to create the climate because the sun's power can be spread over the entire surface area of the earth at once on paper. That is the starting point of climate science. That's what they believe. Is that not amazing? As opposed to the sun creates the climate in real time when you use the real-time input. Is that not the most amazing admission you've ever seen? And no credentialed skeptic I know of disputes it. Well, what does that say about the skeptics then? Let alone the alarmists. Certainly alarmists are entirely founded, this, founded in this. I mean, he's not saying anything different than the alarmists. So yes, this is standard climate science, climate physics pedagogy. This is, this is the standard stuff. It doesn't matter if you're a skeptic unless you're a person like me, but it doesn't matter who you are, as long as you're in the academic establishment, this is what you believe. You believe that sunlight can be spread over the entire surface area of the earth at once, and therefore sunlight is too cold to create the climate, and therefore there must be this alternative fake version of a greenhouse effect where the climate creates itself. Is that not amazing that that is exactly what he just said that everyone believes? And as I've shown, I've shown the references in previous videos, it is indeed what everyone believes. As opposed to this reality, with physics and existence occurring in real-time to real-time impulses, matter and energy and everything in reality and physics is a real-time phenomenon. Everything is constantly reacting to real-time impulses, to real-time inputs and outputs, to real-time impulses, to real-time forces right? Reality is not responding to theoretical averages of quantities that don't exist in times and spaces where they never actually physically exist. I mean, what a strange abstraction that is. I can barely explain what, what it even means. It's such a strange abstraction. You take something that happens in real time and you average it into time and space where it never exists and then say that this is what's driving physics. Oh, wait, but now it apparently can't lift the rocket off the pad and the sun can't create the climate. And how do I cook this turkey for four times as long, but with a quarter times the power, it's still coming out of the oven raw. 
I don't know what it is with people. Like, what is going on in the world that people don't understand such basic things? But, you know, people do. Regular people do understand these basic things and can see the difference between these two diagrams. Regular people with high school educations can see this right away. They get it. Why is it that people with PhDs don't know how to cook a turkey and don't know how, <laughs> like, people, PhDs in physics don't know how a rocket lifts off the pad? and that it responds to real-time input, not average thrust averaged over the entire mission lifetime. How, how do you not understand those distinctions? How do you not understand this distinction that you can't spread sunlight over the entire Earth at once? And that when you do that, you make sunlight too cold to create the climate versus this real-time thing. I mean, it's strange. It is the strangest phenomenon, but here you have seen it from the physicist's mouth, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So I hope that was helpful. Reality, existence, physics is a real-time phenomenon, not an average phenomenon. The whole idea of averaging over time and space and values or whatever, where something never occurs and doesn't exist, it's a strange abstraction. That sure, you can write down that mathematically on paper, but it has nothing to do with reality, does it? Why is it so difficult to understand? Existence is a real-time phenomenon response to real-time inputs. Real-time inputs from the sunlight create the climate. Hope that helps. Take care. Bye-bye.